All right, this lesson is a quick summary of um, the method of mixtures to determine uh, the specific heat capacity or other unknown values in the specific heat capacity equation. Q equals mass or energy equals mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature. So this is known as the method of mixtures. Before we start, I'm going to define calorimetry because calorimetry or a calorimeter is often mentioned in these problems. So a calorimeter is a very simple concept. A calorimeter is just a device or like a container um, that allows a chemical reaction or some physical um, interaction uh, to take place and it kind of traps the heat or the energy transfer inside that container. So we often call this um, heat measuring uh, technique, we call it calorimetry. So an example is uh, you have a container where in which you add, for example, water at some temperature and you place some hot piece of metal. That is a classic example and then we see that they interact and they exchange heat. If the metal was hot, it would heat up the water uh, until they reach thermal equilibrium. And the idea behind calorimetry is that this vessel is perfectly or close to perfectly, it's impossible to be perfectly insulated, but this vessel is really well insulated. So we assume that no energy is lost to the surroundings. It's kind of completely separated from that outside world. We say it's like an isolated system where just the chunk and the water will interact. So here's an example. Uh, imagine you run an experiment where you heat up a chunk of metal. In this case, you're heating up a chunk of iron and you place that iron into an insulated container like a calorimeter and you put that in with the water uh, which has its own temperature when you combine them they reach thermal equilibrium okay and these values are given the metal is heated up to 98 the water uh, is initially at 24 so those are sort of our starting temperatures these are like our starting temperatures that's important these are like our starting temperatures. Once we mix these masses together, right? A 55 gram chunk of iron and 125 grams of water. Once we mix these together, they do reach a, um, an equilibrium temperature. We know that things that interact, that are allowed to interact long enough, will reach an equilibrium temperature. Okay, everything strives to kind of reach this equilibrium when two things interact that are different temperatures. And we want to calculate the specific heat capacity of the iron. Using this logic of having a energy lost by the iron must be gained by the water, we are able to assume that in this calculation I can figure out the energy uh, gained or lost by the iron and that must be equal to the energy gained or lost by the water but with the opposite symbol so the only difference is this is basically my water the energy gained by the water and because it has a negative value this is like my energy lost by the iron so I actually just need to calculate some stuff and I can uh, figure out what this value is if I go through this uh, question, I can actually see that I have all the required information to fill this in, except the only thing I'm missing is the specific heat capacity of iron. So let's go through this quickly. I have my mass of iron. I have my temperature change of iron. It goes from 98 to 28. And over here I have my mass of water. The specific heat capacity of water is a given value. So I will include that in a second. And then I also have the temperature change of water. The water goes from uh, 24 to 28. So the water actually rises four degrees. 
So let's start to fill this in. All right, so filling in what we know, we have the mass, which I'm going to convert to kg times the specific heat capacity of iron. I'm going to leave that as C because it is unknown. And I need a negative on this side because we said that the heat lost by metal is gained by water. So the temperature change of the metal is then it went from 98 to 28, right? That's the equilibrium temperature, so that's the final temperature. Final minus initial, always go final minus initial. I get negative 70 degrees Celsius equals, and then over here, how do I calculate Q for water or the heat of water? That is mass times the specific heat capacity of water, which will be given to you. Joules per kg Celsius times four Celsius. I'm writing four. I'm gonna go ahead and write four because the temperature change of water is four degrees. Final minus initial. That's where that is coming from. Celsius cancels off there. Kilograms can cancel off here. Okay, kilograms, kilograms. And now I'm just solving this problem. If I go ahead and calculate some of these numbers, also important to notice these negatives should always cancel out. You will always have a positive value for C. So let's simplify this a little bit. If I rearrange this, I should get that C equals, I'm gonna multiply these numbers together and see what I get. I get 0 0.125 times 4180 times 4. That is giving me 2090. And that is joules over kg. And then I'm also going to divide each side by 0 0.055 and 70. I'm going to divide that so that I have isolated C. So I'm actually going to get that number divided by 0 0.055 times 70, 3.85 degrees Celsius, um, which will leave me with a final answer, 2090 divided by 3.85. And my answer is, put that in another color, my answer is 543 if I round joules per kg Celsius. Let's look at one other example. Um, this is a good IB question if you're studying the IB course. A small chunk of metal at 92 degrees Celsius is mixed with an equal mass of water at 23 degrees in a calorimeter. The specific heat capacity of the metal is exactly half of water. What is the equilibrium temperature? So I'm going to jump ahead past that first step and go straight to this, and you should agree with me. The energy lost. On the left side here, the energy lost by the metal must be gained by the water. We say that there's an equal mass. So that means these M values are actually the same. If you have the same multiplier on each side of an equation, it is not necessary to do so. You can eliminate those. Now something we can also do is add our subscripts because we need to differentiate these. So negative specific, specific heat capacity of the metal times the temperature change of the metal equals specific heat capacity of the water times the temperature change of the water. And we just said that the specific heat capacity is half of waters. So the specific heat capacity of the metal is equal to the specific heat capacity of the water divided by two. Let's go ahead and 
sub that in. So now I have, or you could have it as one half, that might be easier for some of you, one half the specific heat capacity of water, one half the specific heat capacity of water times the temperature change of metal equals the specific heat capacity of water times the temperature change of water. Notice, same thing, if this is multiplying each side, I can eliminate it. Now here I go. What am I left with? I'm left with 1 over 2 times the temperature change of the metal. Final minus initial. Final minus initial. Over here, change in temperature of the water. Final, which we don't know, minus initial. If you go ahead and solve this, you will get your answer. Notice that these, I don't really have to differentiate or distinguish between the final temperature of the metal or the final temperature of the water. The equilibrium temperature for each substance will be the same because they are allowed to reach thermal equilibrium. If we go ahead and solve that with the distributive property, I will get negative one half T minus, sorry, plus 46 equals T minus 23. Okay, and now I am just isolating T. I can add a half T over here and over here. Okay, and then I'm going to add 23 here. which gives me 69 equals T one and a half. How can I isolate T? Uh, there's a couple ways, but one easy way is to multiply each side by the reciprocal. If you prefer to use decimal numbers, that will give you the same answer. Um, that will cancel off. T is equal to two-thirds of 69. And you get a final answer of T equals 46 degrees Celsius.